We would like to thank our major sponsor, NASA Organic, for supporting Series 1 of Rose Street Pantry. We live in a world that's full of processed foods, where there's a real disconnect between what we eat and where it comes from. As a health professional and journalist, I'm particularly interested in what goes into the foods we eat and the effects that has on our body. And so I love that there's been a real swing back towards small scale food producers here in Australia, because people want to know where their food comes from and how it's produced. And when you know the face behind the food you eat, you can ask questions. And it wasn't until I started engaging with my local producers that I came to realise just how much of an impact soil conditions, changes in climate, sustainable farming practices have on the foods we eat and why eating seasonally is so important. So this is what this series is all about, celebrating Australian producers, hearing their stories, learning their practices, experiencing their beautiful products, and encouraging more of you to access real food. On today's episode, we're off to Melbourne's inner north to meet English-born chef and charcuterie king, Robbie Bell. Along with his wife, Rebecca, Robbie launched City Larder in 2015, a wholesale supplier of traditional French-style charcuterie that was conceived with small independent retailers in mind. They're all about small batch, handcrafted, restaurant quality products using Australian ingredients, sourced from ethical producers. But what's so lovely about this family-run business is that unlike many wholesalers, these guys maintain a strong presence at farmers markets across Victoria. But today, we're off to their commercial kitchen in the Melbourne suburb of Heidelberg, where Robbie plans to show us how to make a couple of their signature products. G'day Robbie. Thanks for, thanks for having us. No, no, so good to be here, finally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of my vices is pate, so. You and many others, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you got in store for us today? Well, I'm gonna make a free range chicken liver pate, which is yep. one of our classic recipes. Yep. It's pretty simple. What you see is what you get. There's, no, there's nothing added in there. It's a recipe that I brought from Europe. Um, and I, I did it in many restaurants. I've made, all of it slightly so, a bit, so it can be a bit more of a wholesale product, but basically it's just a classic uh, free range chicken liver pate. Yeah, okay. And so basically what's the, well, yeah, what's the process uh, for making a pate? You make a reduction of uh, onions, garlic and alcohol. We use port, Madeira and brandy. Alcohol. Yeah, yeah. exactly. When, once that gets down, it goes a bit sticky, a little bit sweet, yeah. and that's the base flavor. We make a bouquet garni of thyme and bay leaf. Yep. Also you can put peppercorns and things and whatnot in it, but we actually grind them spices and add a spice mix. We emulsify the protein, which is the free range chicken livers, with a fat, just like a mayonnaise, exactly the same way. The mayonnaise, you use an egg yolk and a fat. Yep. We use a protein being the chicken livers and the fat being the butter, which is a warnable butter. Well, shall we get going? I want to ask you a few questions about your business as For we sure. roll through, but I'll, I'll sit back and observe you uh, put this uh, masterpiece together. Let's do this back into my world. Brilliant, brilliant, <laughs> let's go. Our slices, our slices of the mandolin. And make it not too, not too thick, but not too thin. So I'm just gonna slap, I'm just slicing the garlic with the onion to give it a bit more of that Frenchy flavor. Now I'm gonna get on to making a bouquet garni. Yes, and I've gotta ask Robbie, why did you start City Larder? Look, I feel like charcuterie and, well, especially terrines and pate is a dying art form, to be fair. And I, um, I really want to get into, into making it just to keep that, that, that tradition alive, really. And then the other reasons would be, you know, I just feel like I really, we really want to bring restaurant quality products to the home environment. 
And is there something special about using, you know, otherwise secondary ingredients to make such a beautiful piece of art? Exactly, exactly that. So we, I love make, turning a, a secondary ingredient into a premium product. You know, a liver into a pate is, you know, it's a $2 product, $4 product into a $6 product. So it's kind of that nose to tail Yeah, approach. using up all the ingredients, yeah. exactly, yeah, exactly. But yeah, exactly that. So we're gonna add the bouquet garni. Mm -hmm. We're going to pour in the, the port. Oh, <laughs> best beer. <Yeah. laughs> I've got a great story about port. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah, it was a rough night. Save that, <laughs> the, the, Save the, that for another time. Yeah, definitely. The Madeira and the, a little bit of brandy. And then all we do simply is put that on the stove and uh, reduce it down. Get it nice and sticky, and that's the base of the, of the pate. Simple as that. Sounds yeah, gorgeous. It's beautiful. So at this point, Tom, we had the butter. Do you mind just passing it over? Oh, <laughs> what did you last time, Tom? <laughs> Not passing me the butter. <laughs> So that's nicely reduced and the butter's all melted. Let's talk about the livers. And so speaking of livers, Robbie, what is the difference between your pate and a pate I'd buy at the supermarket? So first of all, ours is free range and we don't use any fillers or any breads or anything to bulk it out. Okay. So now I'm just gonna put it in the, in the pot with the eggs, put them in the pot here because we need to warm them because everything needs to be about the same temperature. I'm gonna get the, the free range eggs, crack them into here. So now that's in the pot, I'm just gonna put it on the stove, warm it through, combine it with the butter, blend it with the spices, and jar it up. So now I'm going to pass it through the fine chinois. And that takes out all the, all the lumps. That's what, more like a restaurant style, like I was saying at the beginning. It, uh, yeah, we, we like to pass it as opposed to just getting all them lumps in. We want to take them out. going to pour the pate now into the sauce gun, fill it up. Exactly, look how it's, uh, see it's thickening up. So I'm going to transfer them into this smaller container and add, yep. the, add the hot water and get them ready to go in the oven. And, and so Robbie, you mentioned before that you source all your ingredients locally. How important is that? So yeah, it's really important to us that we, that we know where our ingredients are coming from, who's looked after them. And we have a personal relationship with them farmers, you know? And also we like to support local community. The, the community from the farmers markets to the farmers is really important to us. It's really important for at the community, all the way from the top, right the way to the consumer. Now I'm gonna put these in the oven. Yeah, okay, cool. For about, it takes about 45 minutes. So 
Robbie, what meat are we putting into this? This oh. is this is free range uh, pork back fat. Yep. So you know, like on a pork chop. Yep. Underneath the rind, you've got that bit of fat. That's that's the fat from from there. And what else? This is pork shoulder. Oh. Skin oh. off. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So it's all about the ratio between the, 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 pro the protein and the fat. So that I'm going to add the free range chicken, liver, chicken livers. But it's the same livers that we use for the pate. We just put them straight in. That gives it a nice, if you just had meat and fat, it would be very, um, it'd be a lot firmer. The livers give it a little, a nice, a nice spread feel, feel to it. And now, like I said, we add the pistachios for the, a nice bit of color, and then finish off with the spices. And now we just mix it all together. So I assume from here, Robbie, it goes into this lime tin. That pancetta looks so beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's uh, Australian pancetta, lightly smoked. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's a great gorgeous. product. Should All I get right. it in? Yeah. Let's, Let's go. go. Okay. So the technique is get a bit in your hand like this. Maybe Shall you should. Consume. Yeah, maybe you step back a little bit, honestly. Okay. And then. Uh, oh! <laughs> in like this. And this is how we build it up. This knocks the air out of it. Okay. So if you are doing it at home, this is how you want to do it. Just get it in. Amazing. Make a little big sausage roll, let's say. Amazing. And then what we do is we fold it over, peel back the pancetta. This looks so good, Robbie. I've never attempted a terrain at home, it, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's the elements of making it, all the separate elements are quite difficult, but once it's you've got all them elements done, it's pretty simple to put together. I reckon terrain is one of those dishes that looks incredibly impressive. When you put it on a on a deli platter or on a on a board with some nice chutney, some charred bread or something, a uh, dinner party, it always stands out for itself. Like stands yeah. well for itself, you know. Yeah, beautiful. So we top it with bay leaves, fresh thyme, bay leaf, fresh thyme, and we do that all the way along. And the reason for that is basically uh, the the French. It's a because it, it's a French terrine, the classic pork and pistachio. It's it's a classic. It's like you know. So your sauce in Asian cookery is like thyme and bay leaf in French cookery. Yeah, now we've just got to wrap it, yep. quack the tin foil on it, and bang it in the oven. Yeah, okay. Beautiful. Let's do it. It's important when you do this, you bring it to yourself, and you get it nice and tight, because the proteins will expand. I know it's a bit of a bit of jargon, but this will yeah. stop it. <laughs> This will stop it from getting the cracks in it, you might from see. my protein expand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Looks beautiful. So in the oven she goes. And that's it, she's ready to go. Beautiful. Brilliant. Now we're in 40 minutes and she'll be ready. Oh, oh the best bit, Robbie. Tasting. Tasting, Let's yes. get it. Do Look you want me to take a slice? It looks magnificent. Do you want it, how, would you like it big, thick or thin? <laughs> Always like it thick, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, Robbie, that looks amazing. Yeah, like we were saying about the colour and the texture. Yeah. Nice oh. fingers. Yeah, I like to cut it like, like that. Yeah, beautiful. Get into it. All right, thank you. Let's give it a... It smells beautiful, honestly. I like so, straight from my yeah, mouth. It's like slightly smoky pork. It's, it's beautiful, I love it. That's mm. bloody beautiful. Mm. Um, Great balance. Great level of flavour. Mate, stunning. Mm. Um, what about the patty? Yeah, 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 the patty, yeah. Cool. Mm, let's go. It's my favourite bit. I always go, I always go deep. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, oh, look at that, mate. Of course you do, mate. Bloody marvellous. Cheers. Oh. Bloody marvellous. Beautiful. Um, well. So, 
We're going to take some of your some of your gear back. I've got your little goodie bag here. Thank you. Go back Thank to... you. I'll take it back. I'll uh, do some cooking with it. Yeah. Well, enjoy. Well, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Mate, it's and, legendary. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I'll um, tidy up. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thank See you. Later. Bye. After a successful morning in the kitchen, I returned to the lively streets of Fitzroy to cook up a storm with my partner in crime, Meredith. And we're back in the kitchen. Our yes, favourite place to be. Yeah, it's good. Um, and we've got some beautiful produce mm. today. We thought we would start today with a little plata. Mm, I think so. A little plata. Yeah. Is that a word? Yeah. Well, my friend Anita calls it a plata. Oh, don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she's a bit of a lady. So, oh, know, is she? Yeah, mm, oh, yeah, okay. Especially compared to me. So, yeah, well, that's not hard. Mm. Um, and we've got some of the beautiful City Larder products mm. today. Uh, this terrine. Mm. Chicken, leek and truffle terrine. Mm. Tom and I might have smashed a few of those <laughs> uh, in our tub. Smashed several of those mm. over mm. a glass of a... Uh, something lovely. Something, lovely. something lovely in French and... Mm you know, divine, yeah. mm. and some of their beautiful pickled onions. Yeah, really traditional pickled onions. Very ploughman's platterish, mm, isn't true. it? So anyway, um, we may as well just try something, I suppose. I think we should. Yeah, make sure. Mm. Just in case we you know, have to work out whether we like it or not. Well, you know, All it's right. going to be done. Mm. Okay, do you want to do the honours? Can I? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love Tamara's truffle cheese. You want to try some? Mm. Is that good? Mm. You can smell mm. it. You can smell the truffles. Mm. 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 It is good. That is delicious. You like that, don't mm. you? Yeah. Mm. And it goes perfectly with the terrain. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now, while I could have this in front of me all day, we're not going to. Because yeah. we're going to get going it's very with, tempting. That, with today's little seggy. Mm. So, we're going to cook a beef wellington with the beautiful pate from City Larder, which we picked up. It'll be delicious. And? And I am going to include lots of our gorgeous fresh herbs, amazing mushrooms. We're going to roast some trussed tomatoes and a few other things. And we're going to have quite, mm. a, quite a feast. A big feast. So shall mm. we get going? All righty. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to start with the beef wellington. And, uh, you know, part of beef wellington, you want some really beautiful, good mm. quality steak. Yep. We're going to layer our beef wellington with steak, pate, beautiful uh, myriad of mushrooms mm. and also some beautiful prosciutto and then yeah. we're going to wrap it all up with some damn beautiful pastry. Mm. Okay, while you're doing the beef wellington, I'm going to do some sides. So I'm going to do some gorgeous roast veggies. I'm going to feature these beautiful shallots, which I love roasting whole. They're amazing. Fresh green beans as well and some trussed tomatoes that I'm going to roast in the oven. Gorgeous. How's that sound? Yeah, bloody divine. Mm. Well, you get started. Yeah. I'm going to get onto my mushies. Perfect. And then we'll put it all together. Be Sounds good. fabulous. Yeah, be great. So while Meredith gets onto the mushrooms, guys, we are going to start with a very hot pan, okay? And we're going to sear off our scotch fillet, okay? And get a beautiful sort of caramelised outer. So let's get going on that. Love that sizzling sound it makes, it's so divine. Okay, so what we then want to do is we want to prep our pastry and our beautiful prosciutto. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay out the pastry and then lay the prosciutto over the top because ultimately we're going to transfer the beautiful scotch fillets over onto the pastry and we can layer it and then wrap it all up and just chuck it in the oven and it's going to be so yummy. Right, babe? Oh, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. And we just want to layer it piece by piece, making sure that we cover the pastry completely. Okay, so I'm just going to drop some of these gorgeous fresh herbs into the pan. Some of the mushrooms have already cooked down, so they pick up the beautiful butter and oil flavours. 
I've got thyme, I've got sage, rosemary and basil. So then you stir that in. If you've got thyme, you can sweat it for a little while and then all those flavours go through the mushrooms, through the oil and it's absolutely gorgeous. And then what we do is we add in some more of the delicate mushrooms towards the end. And then you've got that whole lots of levels of flavour, beautiful mushrooms, beautiful herbs and it'll go absolutely perfectly with our beef wellington. And that last piece as I drop it over the bench and we are good to go. Gorge, mm -hmm. how are you doing? Perfect, yep. Come over and join. And ready. Uh, so, Looks we're ready good. to assemble Looks these, good. these things. Have now this look. prosciutto is quite salty mm. and really thin. And then when you get the butteriness of the pastry oh. together, oh. it's going to be perfect. It's going to be perfect. Um, mm. Salt and butter. Yeah, well. Two of you your favourite things. Exactly. exactly. So, let's uh, assemble it. Yep. I'm going to leave you to do the beautiful roast Veg. veggies. Yep. So you want to chop up the veggies. Yep. And what I'm going to do is actually bring the scotch fillets over to the pastry. And we're just going to place them down. Oh, they look beautiful. I know. How beautiful does that look? Mm, perfect. And then we're going to butter the gorgeous pate over them and then smother them in your uh, delicious mushrooms. Yeah, how amazing. Now we need to be very delicate with these little parcels. So, uh, hey, gorge. Hello. Oh. Babe, how good does that look? Looks amazing. Unbelievable. Yep, beautiful. So, we just want to wrap these parcels up. The pastry is very delicate. Oh my gosh. Absolutely gorgeous. And just twist the top. Yeah. Be gorgeous. Yep. Beautiful. Wow. Right. That's okay. amazing. And we'll just transfer these across like that. Very gentle. Bring every corner together. Like that. Now they are good to go. Looks good. Look at all the colour. I know. It looks amazing, doesn't it? Yep. We'll put that down there. And now, shall we? Bun yep. these in the oven. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, babe, How yes. Hello. Pretty good. Gorgeous. Now, let's serve one of these babies okay. up, shall we? Yep. They're enormous, Tom. I know. <laughs> Aren't they? Oh. oh my god, they're so delicate. Wow. Oh, hello, you can baby. smell the pastry. Yes. Mm. Now, let's get some of those veggies on the plate, right. shall okay. we? 
So we've got some beautiful roasted carrots. And I've blanched some fresh green beans to go with it. Then we've got our roasted shallots, which are just amazing once they're all caramelised. Incredibly sweet. And lastly, I have roasted these beautiful truss tomatoes, oh. which I just love finishing off a lot of my dishes They with. look beautiful. I know. Gorgeous. Um, okay. So. Tasting time. Tasting I time. Think. Our favourite time of the day. Oh, been waiting a while. All right, here we go. Let's crack into it. All right. Yum. Oh, that meat is tender. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Who's oh. going to get it first, I wonder? Oh. Hmm? Oh. Oh. I'll fight you for oh. it, Tom. That looks insane. It does look beautiful, doesn't it? I can't even get it all on my fork, Colin. No. <laughs> I don't know whether there's a ladylike way to do this. Not that I'm really ladylike. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so yeah. delicious. Mm. It all just goes together beautifully. That's good. That is mm. among our best. Mm. Yep. Good steak. Yum. Amazing prosciutto. That was a good day. Mm, delicious pate. That was a good day. Thank you. We would like to thank our major sponsor, NASA Organic, for supporting Series 1 of Rose Street Pantry.